Um, I'll be honest, I did not know that there was a progressive uh, group in Arlington. Well, you wouldn't. And, You're only about nine months old. Okay. And so I, I wished I had these sorts of meetings for years now while I've been running on the campaign trail. Um, let's start with the beginning. I'm a longtime Arlington resident. I graduated from Arlington High in 1997. Um, after that, I went to TCU, uh, got a, a bachelor's in political science. Um, moved down to Austin for a little while, came back up to the Metroplex, had a kid, and went back to master's school. Um, I graduated, graduated from UTA in 2015 with a master's in nonprofit administration with a focus on financial management and economic and community development. A lot of words, <laughs> believe me, but um, this is really where I think Arlington has room for growth and needs to grow. Um, the, the first time I ran for office, well, every time I've run for office, I've been unsuccessful so far. Uh, but I don't stop. Uh, sometimes I don't even get on the ballot, sometimes I do. But uh, one of the sort of weird twists of life is that I started running for office about the same time I had my son. And so early on, a lot of the ways, and, and still today, when I look at government, I think about parenting a lot. Because we are truly the parents of our government. Um, while they might sit there with the authority, we are actually the ones whose job it is to rein it in, just like you would a child. Um, my first runs, my son was a toddler, so it was, you know, use your words, keep your hands off of other people's things. Um, but now it's, it's more about focus. Uh, he's 10, so it's, it's more about focus, doing your best. Um, making sure that you're including everybody and listening. And that is what I really would like to do with my campaign, and uh, should I be elected with the city of Arlington, hopefully change that government into a more inclusive listening body, rather than one that um, builds things and loves to celebrate their accomplishments. Um, it's... Uh, when we look at Arlington, there's a lot of different areas that need to change and evolve. Um, one of the ones that I've pointed to a lot is the creation of a Citizens Oversight Board for the Arlington Police Department. We've seen a number of scandals over the last 10 years that I think with Citizens Oversight would either not have been as big a problem or could have been handled very quickly early on. Um, and again, I, I, I haven't really spoken this long before, so I'm used to cutting off all my details and not actually in 90 seconds. Um, but uh, and, and the way I look at evolving our government is not necessarily more layers or um, uh, more events, but literally changing the way we think about government. Right now, we still very much operate on the right or wrong. We're still electing people who say they're for this or against this. Um, and wh whether I'm for or against something personally, I still feel it's a politician's job to try to improve the thoughts of those people who are for or against it. Um, whether you agree or not, you can still help uh, improve a smoking ordinance. Um, one that is a recent thing in Arlington, but one that I'm not a huge fan of, but I, when I spoke with the, uh, the impact group, I immediately told them, even though I'm not for the bill as it's written now, I'll still work with y'all if this is, I mean, this is obviously something that's important to you. I'll help make that bill better through my eyes, but yeah. I, I'm, I certainly wouldn't, yeah. I certainly wouldn't want to confuse disagreement with persecution. And so, um, okay. Aside from that, I'd also like to see the development of uh, a stronger library program in Arlington. Um, right now, I feel that our libraries are sorely underused. Um, in different areas, there's more use than, than others, but every year when I run for office, uh, candidates are not allowed to have a debt to the city. And so I get the call from the city secretary saying, you have a $6.50 fine at the library that you need to go pay. My son and I sometimes return movies a little late. Um, but creating a system of uh, 
Wi-Fi in the parks to get and encourage younger people into other city facilities, into the park. So at least the sun's shining on them while they're looking at their phone. You know, it's very much baby steps, but again, I think there are things that we can do, we can do to encourage a far broader participation. Um, I don't know how many of y'all have had the chance to check out the Ask Arlington app. Um, it is uh, an app for the city of Arlington where you can do code compliance uh, complaints. Uh, there's also a few other categories for different sorts of uh, requests and, and things, but the reason that, would, that it was implemented was there were too many calls to the downtown office for the amount of personnel they had. And so they, they instituted this app uh, in order to reduce the workload on, on those people. And it struck me that this is the only area where that's happening. I, I do open records requests all the time, but there's not the demand for the types of information like that, like there is for code compliance. And so we have to, at the same time as create the, the system, is develop and create the sort of people that will use it. Um, and, and to that end, I think, really focusing on voices that are not heard, um, communities that are tr traditionally uh, marginalized, is incredibly important. Making sure that every resident in Arlington not only knows who to speak to, but knows that if they're not being heard, that they need to change that person. Um, our current makeup of the board is five single member districts, three at large, and a mayor. And um, having run against a lot of these people, literally, <laughs> but also just being in the same room as they campaign, uh, you know, I kind of have picked up some of their tells and their different personalities and the way they handle conflict over the years. And it seems like if your single member district person, uh, candidate or uh, representative isn't listening, they don't have a problem with that. You're just supposed to go to one of the at-large ones. And if none of the at-large people are listening, oh, well, then maybe you're not a valid complaint, uh, which they've done to me a number of times. But the Arlington I want to live in and the Arlington I think we need is one where if your individual single member district uh, can't, uh, politician isn't listening, that we change that person. They need to be listening to each and every one of us. They can't push us off and, and channel our dissent through different systems. Um, so uh, one of the other candidates has proposed adding one more single member district to go up to six uh, and removing one of the at large. Uh, I'm in favor of removing all of the at large and, maxim and uh, creating a maximum for the, each size of each district so that as our population grows, proportionally our representation grows to ensure that no more than 50,000 people or so are represented by each individual person. Um, even that task is daunting. Um, as we'll see when we come to the Q&A, <laughs> I really will try to answer all of your questions and it will be difficult for me because there are so many individual different voices to hear. Um, but that is the sort of effort that you make when you run for public office. Um, I hear candidates speak about uh, a servant's heart, and I really do think that that is so important to purposely and knowingly go into this with the idea that you're not correct. You're not necessarily, you are a role model, but you're not an exemplar. It's your job to serve, not to actually just run around taking credit. Um, and so, kind of along that vein, I, I substitute teach as one of my gigs. Um, I went and taught at Nichols Junior High because we've been having a lot of complaints of uh, sickness in the building relating to air quality. And thinking about it, I had no choice. How could I not know what was going on there? when I have an opportunity to find that out. Um, and when I went, I suffered some of the conditions that I had heard described. Now, can't necessarily say that that wasn't psychosomatic, 
knowing that, knowing what I was walking into, I literally thought that I might be having it. But at the same time, every single teacher I spoke to there knew of the problem, understood the problem, saw what the symptoms were, and when it was becoming a, when it would become a bigger problem, and acknowledged it as such. And so I have to say that I don't think that this is any sort of hysteria. I'm sorry. That was the wrong word. <laughs> any, any sort of um, crazed, uh, false, uh, you know, uh, pardon me. Um, but, at, at the, yeah, but at the same time, so many people dismiss it as uh, either not a problem or offhandedly as uh, a way for kids to get out of school. But these are literally the future of Arlington. These kids are the ones that will be living on the north side more than likely in 10 years as adults. And so they have every right, even though they don't have rights because they're minors. They still have every right to go to a safe environment to learn. And what they need more now than they will in the future are politicians and administrators and teachers and principals that are looking out for their best interests. And so I really do hope that knowing how high of a bar I've set, that I can attempt to reach that. Um, but like I said, I'm a flawed human. I make mistakes, but I do try to acknowledge them when I do. Um, that's good, what, a minute ago? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I think in the next 10 to 15 years, we're gonna see government um, become much more interactive. Uh, with the millennials coming online as voters, they're going to demand more online sort of communication. And I think we can set a real precedent, set 